I'm Amanda Haas, and I am a Whole Foods Market ambassador and a cookbook author. And this weekend, I'm spending the entire weekend here hosting this stage with so many amazing chefs, winemakers, and filmmakers. So you picked an amazing one to come to today. I'm really excited to share a preview of this movie with you. I can say it, Lama June, with Anahid Nazarian, who's the filmmaker. So let's watch the clip. A friend of my dad's used to come here, and he was over to the house. He says, come around the corner, I'll get you something different. Lama June. Lama June. Lama June. It's like one of those foods that just brings people together. It doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. They've been with me for over 30 years. These are the Armenian boys from South of the border. The three of them, Leon, Francisco, and Jose, they were like brothers. Leon mentioned it on a number of occasions that when he passed, that he did want to leave the business to the boys. Nos enseñó, nos dio la receta, la, nos las decía en poquito español que él hablaba y poquito inglés que nosotros hablábamos. Escribimos la receta en español. You go in there and hear these Mexican guys who are rolling sarmas, they're making kiftas, they're petting llama juns, and they do a beautiful job. They've maintained the recipes. You know, this is kind of quintessential America right here. Culture sort of enjoying each other, even without even really thinking about it. Obviously, they don't need to be Armenian or Mexican or whatever, just as long as they love llama jun. So exciting. Before we bring out the chef, I want to ask when it's screening. It screened yesterday morning, 10 a.m. It's going to screen tonight at the Archer Theater at 6 o'clock. Oh, terrific. And it's screening at Charles Krug Winery on Saturday evening at 8.30. Congratulations. Thank you. It's really exciting. I hope everybody gets a chance to go watch it. And in the meantime, we have this amazing pairing with the chef, Vache Mukhtarian. How'd I do? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Please come on out. He's owner of the Cracked Pepper Bistro in Fresno. He also won Guy's Grocery Games. <laughs> How you doing? Celebrity in our midst. Hi. This happens to be his recipe, too, for Lama June from the movie. And we're really happy to have you here sharing I'm, this I'm with us. I'm excited to be here. So um, we got a couple of different components. That we have our dough base and we have our mixture base. So my mixture is 25% lamb and 75% ground beef. Right. So you, you like can to mix, combine. Yeah. So... A lot, of, a lot of these recipes, every family had their own recipe. So right. in Lebanon, when I was born, I remember my mom, my aunt, they'd make the mixture and they could t take it to the bakery. Right. And the baker would make it for them, and then you go pick it up. They never oh, baked right. it at home. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, everybody had their own individual secret. Way of doing it. <laughs> I think it's interesting That's in the really film. True. Uh, that's really true. It's one of those things that people didn't really make it at home too much. They would rather just go out and buy it. Isn't that interesting? So I never made it. My, my mother and her family never really made it, but we learned how to heat it up, which is also, <laughs> it's a trick to that, actually. There is. There is, there is there? a trick to that. You What's don't just stick trick? it in the oven. So. No, you gotta do it in a saute pan. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good to, oh, with the thin dough. It, yeah, yeah, you gotta does. flip it. Wow. You keep it together with the paper in the middle, and you flip it. Oh my, my favorite way to eat it is uh, scrambled eggs on top of it. Oh, oh my gosh, amazing. Uh, but my mom, my grandma, they like the salad, like a arugula salad or some right. sort of salad on top. A lot of lemon, garlic, like a lemon Dijon type of vinaigrette. Oh, delicious. Yeah, so should we start making the dough? Yeah, or? I would love. Let's, uh, right. let's do the beginning, and I think it's interesting, too, because the fact that this gentleman was able to take this Armenian recipe and pass it down to these other two people. Will you share the rest of the story too, like where the recipe has evolved now and whose yeah. hands it landed in? You know, everybody always thinks theirs is the best. It's yeah. like every culture, well, my mother's is the best, but there are many good ones, and sure. I'm sure that Vache's is, is as good as that. You get to be the judge. I right? don't say that because the family's not here, I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, but every family does it differently. It's, uh, there's no... Yeah. The, How old do you think this recipe is, like your family's version? Do you know who started? You probably probably my impossible grandmother. to know. Okay. My grandmother passed it down to my mom. Right. And then it's been changed over generations. Sure. It's, it's, it's all about flavor, right? If you don't like something, like I'm not a big fan of the pomegranate juice in there. Right. It's very... It's, it's very tart. It is. And it's almost, if you use too much, right. it makes the meat feel like it was sour. 
So I was wondering back then, maybe they didn't have good refrigeration. Right. Were they hiding the flavor. Oh my gosh, but it's <laughs> a power. great point. <laughs> you know, so you, you get to question that. And you say, start questioning your, your, your parents. I go, hey, why? Huh? Huh? Why was this in here? A little yeast. Um, so you're going to use regular yeast that's regular just yeast. dry yeast. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then salt, salt, of course. If you were here at the last demo, this is looking familiar too. Yeah. Some basics to baking that. So the milk happen. keeps the dough a little softer. Okay, that's what nice. they use the milk in there. Right. So a little olive oil. Olive oil, beautiful. So in your restaurant, you don't you kind of developed your own style of cooking. And what I thought was so interesting is being in Fresno, we forget everything in California is grown <laughs> in your backyard pretty Everything's much. grown in our backyard. So we focus on the local seasonal items that the farmers are growing. I have a great guy, Paul, that does everything for me. Wow. I can call him and say, Paul, I'm running uh, heirloom tomatoes and I need French green beans and, and he'll, he'll do it all there. Except for our want. lettuce, uh, c comes from a Gil Gilroy area, right. just the weather, right? because you need a little bit of a cooler weather. But it's not, not. you're not doing all Armenian food at your restaurant. You no, I'll incorporate once in a while a little bit, but they're not coming to the restaurant for Armenian food, so, so I got to change it up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm really excited to see your version of this. And you all get to try it right now, I saw, right? Everyone's got so a So you want to squeeze a little lemon on there. That's traditionally how we ate it. Oh, terrific. And that's us, you know? Yeah, or yeah. eggs or, you know. So the dough, you're just incorporating. Just like a, if you don't want to make this, you can go buy any pizza dough. Right. Uh, at your and Whole Foods. Or they have a great prices. You know, you can just. Yeah. And typically, you want about a two ounce ball to three ounce. Just depends what size you want to make. So a three ounce ball will give you about a eight inch round uh, flatbread pizza, okay. I guess, you know. Or, That's a that great, I mean, a cheater, right? If you're missing the flavors. Of, it is, if you don't want um, to. Your culture, and you can still just use a pizza dough or something. That's great. You can buy it refrigerated at the store. Yeah. And it's delicious. It's right? delicious. It might, you would probably have to let it sit out for a little you while do. to try to get it this thin. You, right? yeah. well, that's yeah. really true. Uh, that's really true. You can make it with tortillas. Yeah. Fun. You know? Right. Yeah. So you use the what's at hand or what's available, yes. and it, it can be all good. Make it your own. And, and by the way, this is my sister, who's also a very good cook. Oh, so nice And to she's have here you. to uh, comment as well. Oh, that's so. true. Now the pressure's on. You brought your you got yeah, two, right? <laughs> I know you've got some judges here. I'd be a little nervous if I yeah. were. No, I'm kidding. I'm curious, too, about the wine that we're pairing with it. Steve, will you share? Well, we're pouring uh, a 2015 Cab Franc. Um, it's a Bordeaux style. A Bordeaux. Uh, beautiful, mouth-pleasing, rich texture, uh, red fruit, black currant, cassis, hints of baking spice. I'm curious how it all holds up. chocolate, very a beautiful minerality, a nice earthiness to it. Nice, terrific. And maybe with all of these spices, I think we'll so. see It'll what the good. combination is like, right? And this is the product that you're looking for then. You want nice, soft dough. Something oh, now for, I see it. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. So you want usually about a couple of hours counter, okay. warm area, let it rise. You can make the balls and let them rise again if you like. So punch it down, punch shape it them. Down, shape them, about three ounces, and it'll be easier to roll out. Okay, right. So then we're gonna move over to the... Our meat mixture. Okay. Anahid, was there anything to the recipe that you found that you were studying in Los Angeles when making this was extra special? Well, they were very guarded about the recipe. Right. And they wouldn't even give it to me, so... They wouldn't? No. Oh <laughs> well, gosh. Maybe if I'd, but they are very protective of it. Yeah. And it's a family thing. It's like a member of the family. You don't want to just give them away to anybody, you know? We were just talking about this, like, sourdough starter, where people are like, we're not sharing the family recipe, right? But uh, it's the same thing. It's theirs. Yeah. You know, so, a lot of times we do, I'll do it too. I'll keep it yeah. for ourselves. And, but at this point in age, it's like you can, it's easier to share. Because right. you want your culture to shine, right? You want Absolutely. that food to shine. So yeah, I, don't, I don't have a problem sharing with that because it has to be passed on yeah. somehow. Right. So, and I think I looked online for their recipe. I you can't find it. you won't find it. I would like to mimic no. theirs, you no. know, <laughs> but I couldn't find it, so. One thing about, to mention about recipes is uh, generally the older generations, they don't even use a recipe. Right, they just. Like my grandmother was illiterate. She couldn't read or write, yep. so she didn't really know what a recipe was. She yep. just did, used her senses. Right. You know, sm smell, taste, taste. sight. Yep. 
that's how you cooked and a recipe. I mean, we would have to watch her and write down stuff, but she never used she a recipe. She never, yeah. yeah. You'd say, like, uh, how much salt? She'd go, oh, oh this <laughs> much. <laughs> this is a great cook. Measuring cup right here. Whatever cup was around. That was what she would use. Yeah. I mean, when you get comfortable cooking, it's the best way to do it, right? And then yeah. you can make it your own every time. Definitely. And put your own twist I'm on sure Vache's family, grandmother. The grandmother, same thing. The she same thing. Great rice pudding. But none of us have a recipe, so you'd have to pretty much watch her, see how you made it. And then to this day, none of us have it. Even at the restaurant, I, we have steps, procedures, yeah, but ingredients, but I don't have like this much of this. Things change. Oh, absolutely. Like heavy cream in the summer tastes sweeter than in the winter, mm -hmm. just depending on the feed or, or, or you know. Well, that's so interesting. Yeah, like sometimes I'll make whipped cream, and I was like, why is this not coming out it's this totally time of year? Different. You know? Wow. So you just kind of want to bake this apart a little bit. Okay, so ground lamb and ground beef. Do you use less ground beef, but you're trying to just create a I use more ground beef. Oh, I use 75% okay. ground beef and then right. 25 uh, If you like the lamb flavor, you can add more. Right. So I think the recipe should be guidelines. You make this one the way it's shown. Yep. The first time, go, you know what? I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm going to leave this out. And then make it your own. Right. So I think that's the best way to cook. Because if you're just following a recipe, you're never developing any... You know, your own skill. family skill. Yeah, <laughs> change it up. For your own, be, that's be, exactly be it. Be brave, you know, don't... Right. Uh, I mean, I love lamb itself, so I might not cut it, but for if I'm entertaining and I want people over and they, it's maybe not something they eat all the time, I would certainly cut it with beef or yeah. even pork. I like pork with it I as love well. pork, yeah. So good. I think this is the Posey Ranch lamb we're using from oh, Whole Foods, nice. which is amazing. Yeah, you amazing. Do your tomatoes. Okay, so you, are these just diced? They're just diced, really small. Could you pull some in a food processor? You could, they get or, a little mushy. Yeah. Even the peppers, you want to dice them as small as possible. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can go to a Mediterranean store and have a red pepper paste. Yeah. You can buy that, incorporate that instead of okay. the, if you can't get it fresh. It's you know? kind of beautiful to have it, it in is. there. It is, I like the kind of texture in there, right. so it just depends up to you on how you want to do it, you know? I'm laughing well, because I would assume with some of the things we're making, you'd be cooking the ingredients first. This happened yesterday, too, when we were working on Turkish food. It's like this all goes in raw. It all goes on top of raw. It's really and, easy. And you want to just kind of open your dough, form it out, and then you take this almost like a wet meatloaf. Uh-huh. And you, you need to have sausage fingers. That's <laughs> crucial <laughs> to be able to kind of get it all on there. <laughs> so... So let's your garlic. Oh, garlic, lots of garlic, lots of garlic. onion, yellow onion, onion. yellow onion, whatever you have, whatever you have, sweet. If you want to use sweet Vidalia onions, right? You can, I again, the, I use all, those in everything. A lot of parsley. Oh wow, all freshly chopped. All freshly chopped. So a little allspice. Allspice. Allspice very strong. So go easy on it. If you like the flavor, next time add a little bit more. Okay. And then the Aleppo peppers. Oh, I saw the Aleppo. If someone hasn't had it, how do you describe it? Between cross a little bit of cuminy, floral, and then yeah. and then uh, uh, almost like paprika. Uh huh. So, but if you can't get it, you can if you can't find it, you can cut a little paprika, a little cayenne pepper, mm -hmm. and that kind of gives you the same flavor. But it's not spicy. It's not meant to be no. hot. It's just it a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor. Yeah. yeah. Just a lot so. of depth. A lot of depth. It's a lot easier to find now than it used to be. It as is. Well. I think so. You can almost every store. Yep. Carries it now. So you've got black pepper and salt, always seasoning. Always seasoning. So olive oil to bind it? To just bind a little it, bit? yeah. No, no a lot, egg. quite a bit. Is this looking familiar compared to what they did? It's looking very familiar, except right. they were using like 50 pounds. Of right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, this Crazy is more like rice. a home, home version, right? So tomato paste, typically you cook, right? It's uh -huh. raw. So try not to just lump it, lump it in there. So I put it on the rim of the plate, of the bowl. So when I'm mixing, I just grab a little bit at a time that is and brilliant. mix it in because you don't want to bite into no. a, just a big lump of tomato paste. That is you know? such a great suggestion. I'm learning all of these things about cooking that I should know by now, but what a great way to incorporate it but and you not worry something. about it being lumpy. But I think you learn something new every day in cooking. We're, we're if, saying you, if you say you know everything, you, <laughs> I don't we, trust you. There's <laughs> no way, and I don't care who you are cooking, there's more to learn every single day. It's so. funny, I have chefs that bring resumes, right? And, it looks great on paper. I'm like, okay, go into the kitchen, make me <laughs> rice and make me mashed potatoes right. and, a, and they a steak or, or an omelet. Right. And they're like, what? <laughs> what was that great movie, The Hundred Foot Journey, where the test is he, uh, she would just have somebody make an omelet and she'd take one bite and then that was it. You're hired or you're not hired. Omelet's hard to make. Oh, so this Get is it nice gorgeous. And fluffy. All right, and you don't have to worry about overworking it because no, you don't not... because it's, it's you're gonna or you want to incorporate everything. Okay. Now, a good way to find out too before you commit to making this, right? Make a little patty, a little yeah. hamburger, and pan fry it. See if you like it. If the seasoning's right for you, 
If you want to add something more, go ahead and salt. can't take away. No, you can't take salt <laughs> away. You, you can't, can't take, take seasoning away. But, but don't be afraid of salt. Salt tends to bring out all the flavors. We've gotten so used to cooking low salt, low salt, low salt. Right. It's just, you know, the, nothing shines, nothing comes out. It, it really, salt brings out the flavors. It does. And I, I always say, like, if you do compare restaurant food to home-cooked food, you're probably using a lot less salt in your home cooking. So when people are like, oh, you're putting a teaspoon in there or something, it's still better than I, what I'd get. Oh. You know, like in restaurants, they're much more generous. So seasoning is so important. It makes everything taste better. I'm a big believer at our restaurant, olive oil, uh, salt, pepper is our key. And that's it. I try not to season a lot of things with different flavors. Right. If you buy a good product, you don't need to. That's it. You know, when you're working with these beautiful ingredients, right, you don't my need favorite to. thing, we're talking about the Posey Ranch lamb or grass-fed steak. People always ask me, what do you put on it? Olive oil, salt, and pepper. We could write a book on that. So this is the pomegranate that we're going to add. So you want to, again, I put very little, two teaspoons, you know, so uh, but it gives you a little bit of tang to it, yeah. but not a lot. If you want to make it, you know, if you like that pungent flavor, right. add more, but... Pomegranate juice or molasses? It's is this pom pomegranate it's molasses? Pomegranate. It's like a molasses? Uh-huh. Yeah, you can like get, you can it, get any, it in the baking aisle. Any reduce, baking or Mediterranean yeah. or yeah. my new favorite, Amazon. Something. Yeah, I know. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> it's amazing what you can find. And it's at your I have, I have more boxes of Amazon coming to my house sometimes. That's so I get funny. It. It's addicting. It is. <laughs> it's just so easy. It's so easy. Uh, do they use the pomegranate in their mixture as I don't well? think they use that at the bakery. Uh -huh. um, but I know other people that use it. Yeah. Again, it's to your taste, you know? Absolutely. And it's interesting what he's saying, like maybe that was a thing in the past to hide if something was going bad. There's probably a good argument for that. Also, it was a lot case. harder to find in the past pomegranate Isn't juice Isn't it interesting? It's, it is it's now, popular so. right now. A yeah. superfood moment, Much I more think. popular. Right. So tell me, when you were making the film, had they already transitioned the recipes to his two employees? Were they his employees? Yes, they were his employees. I think they started in the 60s or 70s. Um, and uh, he taught them from the very beginning the same recipes, and they continued the same recipes for 30, 40 years. Wow. Without changing. But I love that it shifted out of uh, an Armenian family into a Mexican-American yeah. family. In fact, and it's in the film, um, when they did take over the bakery after the owner died, they wanted it's in a Spanish neighborhood, so they wanted to start making pan dolce or some of those right. pastries and things. So they asked the Armenian family if they had any recipes. And they're like, oh, we don't have any recipes <laughs> for that stuff. You guys are the Mexicans. Yes, no, we only know how to make Armenian food. So <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. And then they decided to sell it. They sold yeah, the Yeah, they, they were in their getting near age 70. They wanted to retire, so they sold it. And they yeah. passed, but they passed the recipe But along. they passed the recipes on to the descendants of the Armenian family. It's full circle. Full it's, circle. That's pretty amazing. Exactly. So it came back. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Okay, so look at this, our mixture. We're done. Okay, so typically, so, hour, two hours ahead, let uh -huh. it sit in the refrigerator. Okay. Let the flavors marry a little bit. You don't want to just make it and put it on a... Uh, on the dough. Right. You know? It would, yeah, not work well. Not work well. Okay, so, so refrigerator, but you can get it this thin. Like you just spread a layer of this on you the do. dough and it cooks yeah. into it. Okay. So you just kind of just kind of work it, you know. So we'll we'll do it right now. Okay, let's All do right, it. Let's, Let uh, me get this out of your way. A little flour. All right. And since they're not eating this, we can do whatever we want. You want to make, <laughs> you make one with me? Yeah, I'd love to. Are you looking for the? Knife. Oh, for a knife? Oh, yeah. that's like right. I guess it's hand. a secret thing. Yeah. <laughs> we can get dirty. It's fine. All right, All right cool. You can get your. Roll up that looks sleeves. like about a three ounce ball right there. Yeah, it, which you were saying is probably a good one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I now just what? Wanna kinda just kinda fork, work it start, like work dough, it. like pizza. Pizza dough. Yeah. Okay. And if it had t more time to rest in it a magical be, it, world, it'd be thinner faster. It would be thinner faster. It roll it out easier. So you kind of just want to start okay. dimpling it out. Yep. And then you want to use this. I love how you work so quickly. Like I still, this is hard for me. You got hot hands. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Hot blooded Armenians. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> I have heard that. <laughs> right. So I'll roll it out. Oh, if you get a chance to go back here, everyone, to Blanc Creatives, they have these handcrafted tools. Super light. I love it. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah. They're all one of a kind. And then they have, they have this beautiful cookware as well, but their wood tools are stunning. They're here from Charlottesville, Virginia this weekend. Oh, this is... Awesome. So you're, you're going faster, but I'm kind of happy with mine. Yeah. How big? It doesn't have to be to? perfect. Okay. It's not a, it's like a family meal, right? It's We're making it for our family. Amoeba. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like, my food always looks like my kids made it. 
but it'll taste it's good. All right. So then the trick is take your fingers mm -hmm. and go across, make dimples. Oh, for real. So you want the place for that meat to rest in there. You do this, or did I they? Make it now. Yeah, I want to make it now. So you want to come up here? With I've us never here? made it. Yeah, do you wanna, I was like, you can come finish <laughs> mine. Hurting me. But I'd never known to do this. Right. It makes sense. Yeah, even like when you're sauce. Right. So you want a glove or you want to do a uh, you sure, go? I'll use a glove. I'll be cool about it. There you go. Okay, so I'm just going to grab, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to grab some mixture. Some mixture, about a handful. Okay. It doesn't have to be. That? Why not? And then you just start pressing it in. Yeah, start. I'm going to do some too. I think these are a little small. <laughs> 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 you gave me the small gloves here. All right. This is a little bit different than Guy's Grocery Games. I know. Uh, that, what, did you enjoy that experience? That was super fast-paced. Right. Yeah, like six cameras, not one. So oh my gosh, chasing you, around, yeah, huh? chasing you around. Yeah, chasing you around. Okay, so you so start in the middle, kind of, or you just, right just like, okay. I get a little more. Okay. Terrific. And just start to press. And start just kind of just work your way back. Oh, okay. Side. Oh, see, yours is logical. Need a little more. Excuse my reach. Don't stretch out. Oh, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too, too much. much. Right, yeah, yeah. You want to you you make it work. You're like, make it work. Make it work. Yeah, that's but how you But too much, it. it becomes too heavy. The ratio of dough to meat right. is too high. Okay. And then it's, it's like gonna, a good sandwich. You got to have it all, all perfect. <laughs> it's true. It's the same thing with this. So try right. not to go on the edges. Okay. Mine is definitely an amoeba. Ah, it looks nice. <laughs> It smells good. Looks great. It smells amazing, these spices. So it all spice in Aleppo? A little all spice, yeah. a little salt, a little pepper. I like the warmer spice you've got yeah. going. But is this going to kind of like melt down, or is this a bigger dice than what was on the Lama June that they made in the back? I think this is a little bigger dice. Got it. And then what you know, happened, so you want to just go a little bit more okay. out. So you got a little thick right here. Oh, right. And so you want to just kind of, again, just like little dimples, just like you did on the if you do the dimples, the, the, flat, the meat will not shrink down to the center. Okay. It'll try to stay on the outside. So if you just do it all like that, it, it, the meat's gonna shrink like hamburger meat. Uh huh. Just comes to the center. Wow, so this you breaks able, it up. Yeah, you wanna break it up, give it's it some space tip. in between. How many of these do you think you've made in your lifetime? Oh, I don't know. I can't <laughs> you can't count that high, right? I can't count that high. <laughs> but a lot. Crazy. It's, it's a fun. This is beautiful, and I imagine once you learn how to make the dough, too, you could do all kinds yes, of things. Yes, uh, they also, at this bakery, they had a, a vegetarian lama june, which was very popular. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Right. And it was, since we live in a place where we can get any beautiful seasonal ingredients we want, I imagine you could change it The spices are the key, really. The spices, yeah. that blend. I mean, traditionally, Armenians, during the whole period of Lent, they didn't eat meat. Right. So they had to adjust all of their recipes, and it's, so... It's not just a new thing to have a vegetarian version. Yeah, right. It's not just a California thing that we thought of here. Okay, so I'm going to open the oven. I love this double door. Oh, wow. That's perfect. That's such a cool piece to bake them on as well. So typically, you want to cook this fast. You don't yeah, want to slow cook it. 400 degrees? Four or five, as hot as you can go. Okay. It's about a four minute process. The longer you go, the tougher the dough gets. Wow. So you don't want that. You want the dough to stay a little soft so you can roll it. So four, about four or five minutes is the trick. So this could be a really quick dinner. It's funny, like almost a weeknight thing if you wanted well, to. Well, you, you can have that made. you've done that in advance. Yeah, you can have that in advance and just roll out the dough real quick and then get it done. Oh my gosh. You know, Lama June also freezes very well. It does. Just very the dough well. itself? No, the, the whole thing. The whole thing. Oh, terrific. Um, yeah, that you can stack it, Yeah. Uh, wrap it all up, and in the, it freezes very, very well. And then you just heat it up, uh, as Bachi said, in a, in a hot oven, um, face to face on a baking sheet. And it face be, to face. Yeah, I like it. It will be great. Yeah. Great. And also another thing is shelf stable, pretty much. You can leave it out all day long. Like when you go to the Armenian bakeries, this is sitting out. It's not in a refrigerator, so it's really easy to pick up and heat up and eat. So when we have family events, we do this. It just sits out, and people just come and go as right. they want and grab I would some. eat the whole thing if I just walked by it all day long. You yeah, know, it's just out on the counter. <laughs> like, one more piece, one more piece. Well, it's easy. It's so thin. It's like, right. you know, like little baby tacos. You know, you can... Baby tacos. <laughs> Hold it up. By the time you know. Greens on it, sure. Maybe plain yogurt. 
oh, yeah. roll it up, and those things don't detract from the flavor. Delicious. But they fill it out a little bit. Absolutely, the so, yogurt would be amazing. That's what we like too. to do. Yeah, it's very popular to put, uh, as Vache said before, salad in it and roll it up. It's a great idea. Yeah, yeah like a piadine it. almost. Anything, and uh, you were talking about tortillas earlier. Now you can buy these uh, park cooked tortillas. Yeah. They would work great for this product. Right, because then yeah, you, you just, just pop, pop it, it in the, in the oven. oven. With the meat the mixture on there. Wow. And you can have fun with it. It doesn't have to be a mixture, right? You can use chorizo, you can right. make it your own. Have fun with it. Yep. It, it is Armenian, Mid Middle Eastern, Mediterranean. The Turkish fam uh, families have it. So everybody has a, a version, version, of of a version of this. Right. You know, and then in here it's like almost like a meat pie, right? When we fold it. That's what I was like. I want to fold it and eat it like, like a rock. piece of pie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> like a closed. Uh, <sighs> so that's all the uh, parts that go in there. Well, let's take a look. Yeah. Do you think how's it doing? Um, oh, it's at 450. Do you normally do it that high? Yeah. Like pizza oven so high. So 450, 500. Okay. Uh, um, we'll give it another minute or so, yeah. I think. Oh, oven minute. lights. Look at that. Oh, ta-da. Yeah. Maybe another two minutes? Is it brown? You just wanted like a golden brown crust on Yeah, bit? you want a golden brown crust on it. So. Got it. So if we were doing this at home, we'd be drinking the wine while we're waiting for it to cook. So you're saying we should cook, drink some right? wine? We would be having a sip. What do you think of the combination? Do you like the wine with it? I'm Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, Steve, Cheers. over there. Cheers. Is this Providence? The Which label is it? Which? This is Provenance. Okay. It's a 2015. Treasury has been here pouring all of their labels, and they're amazing. We've had some. The Etude Pinot last was great. Oh. But I really like this one. And what do you think of it with the spices of the lava gin? You think like it? I it great with it. It's, it's got yeah. that uh, Mediterranean kind of hint to it a little bit. Right. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. It really okay, good? I want to see these come out of the uh, oven, that's, right? Uh, okay. What do you think? Uh, another no. minute? Well, another minute. It's getting there. We can let people ask us questions yeah, while please. we wait. If there are questions for the chef, for the filmmaker, anything? Yes? What was the name of the spice again? What was the name of the spice? Aleppo pepper. Aleppo. Aleppo. Yeah, it's yeah. really, and I, like I said, it's a much easier to find than it used to be. So the way they make that is they pick the peppers, they dry it, and then they flake it. It's almost like a chili flake-ish looking, you know, but not as big, so... It's very delicious. You're welcome to come up and check it out when we're done, too. Yeah. Where can I find it? Well, you can find it. I've seen it at Whole Foods. Yeah. <laughs> you can find it at Whole Foods. What do you know? But it really is like when you go to look in the spice section now, it's just one of the first peppers that you see, Aleppo. You'll be surprised. Trader, Trader Joe's might have it, too, at this point, and you know, all, kinds right. of, all kinds of places. Very accessible. Yeah, very accessible. If, if you have a Mediterranean store in your neighborhood, um, for sure they have it, you know? So. Right. Uh, any other questions? Yes. What would I, you use? I would. Pache? I would use mushrooms. Mushrooms. Mushrooms and maybe a little bit of wild ri wild rice mixture, and that gives you that earthy flavor that you're looking for. And then all the same ingredients: garlic, onion, pepper. Keep the same, and just cook the sautéed mushrooms. Cook, boil your rice, kind of blend those up a little bit together. Right. And mix everything else into it. And now you probably have to put a little bit of olive oil in there to give it that fat that you need, you know, so. Sauteed mushrooms with all those spices, olive oh. oil, and then greens on that would be delicious. Right? A really beautiful combination. Yes? Do you think I can cook this on my barbecue? Yes, you can. <laughs> but you're going to have to do it a little differently. You're going to have to cook the dough first a little bit, flip, take it out, put the meat on, and put it, put it back. Right. Because it's going to be hard for you to... So you want to get the one side cooked. So just like a minute, a minute, minute or two. Just enough to firm it up a little bit. Yeah. You could also do it on a stone or a sheet pan on you the can, grill. If you have a stone on a... Right. Or even one of these yeah. beautiful pans. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is also made by Blanc Creatives over here. It's a beautiful stone. I don't think stone. running at a... I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> this is when the magic has to come yeah. back. Oh, what do you know? They're done, even though they're not. <laughs> we can take it out. Yeah. Yes, question. Yes. I'll ask the question she's asking to talk about the culture, cultural differences or how this came together between the Armenian and the Mexican cultures. Yeah, that was an interesting combination in that the Mexicans began as, as laborers 
but learned the recipes. And the neighborhood changed through the years from an Armenian neighborhood to a black neighborhood to a Hispanic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But the bakery and the recipes and the foods stayed the same. They didn't change. Um, and I talk about it, it's mentioned in the film, is that the Mexicans, they started trying these foods and they really started liking them a lot. So as the owners say in the film, now we have many, many Mexicans who like Armenian food. <laughs> and basically it's universal. I mean, we all like Chinese food, we all like Japanese food. I mean, right. food is food and you know, it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are, it's just if it tastes good, everybody likes it. And I think that's what's great is that um, the bakery, through all the changes and years of the community changing and people changing and all that, the food stayed the same, and everybody liked it through the years. So I think that's a really nice thing. And it speaks a lot about America, too. I love how you said you're, it's actually a very American story, like the evolution of how this recipe passed through. It's really remarkable. But, but so I think the, even your movie, Hedaway, was also a place where everybody got together there. Definitely. Like, yeah, they would all go and hang out and eat and you yeah. know, grab some stuff and right. gossip or talk. And, <laughs> exactly. You know, and Go back, so it was I, a yeah. cool place. I always say food is just the excuse to bring everybody together. It is, together, right? It's, it's a tradition, a unifying and a factor. To sit down. It really is. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Shall we see if, it, it. if it looks a little more finished before we wrap it up? I put it on the board. Let's also. see. Oh, he he fired this thing up. Let's yeah. see. Uh, well, I mean, no, it just needs to get a little browner. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're welcome to come up here and, <laughs> yeah. and check it out when it is done. Good. <laughs> right. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here with us this afternoon and spending some time with us. And I hope you'll go see the film, which again tonight, 6 o'clock at the Archer? 6 o'clock tonight at the Archer, okay. 8.30 p.m. tomorrow night at Charles Krug up in St. Helena. Terrific. Yeah. So and it's 18 minutes. Uh, it's, it's a fun film. And there are three other, four other films with it all about food and oh, drink. Terrific. It's a culinary group of culinary short films. Uh, so I think you'd enjoy all of them. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Congratulations. You're very welcome. And Chef, thank you so much for oh, being here, too. This you. is That's awesome. Fun. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Thank you all for spending some time with us this afternoon. I'll just take one out. We'll see you soon. Kind of show the oh, yeah. Food.